What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. So, um, something a little different today. We're going to be unboxing this new air compressor I picked up. Um, some of you may know I'm using this little 10 gallon Harbor Freight compressor. I've had it for a few years. Then I saw this one in Lowe's because recently I've been thinking about getting a uh, little sandblasting cabinet. I didn't pick one up yet. I figured I'd get the compressor first. And this one just caught my eye. Um, as you can see, well, if you can see, Apparently it has some kind of quiet tech and it's 80% quieter um, than other compressors. It's 26 gallons. CFM isn't too impressive. It's like four and a half at 90, but it has uh, the capacity where I think it's gonna work good with the sandblasting. I'm just gonna stick it in the corner there. You guys see the little tiny one I have right now. I don't think that's gonna do too well when it comes to actually trying to sandblast something. Another cool thing, it has a three-year warranty, so uh, that's pretty good. Also, I paid three hundred and like thirty-six bucks for it, shipped. Not shipped. I picked it up in store, so three thirty-six, which I didn't think was too bad. I was actually looking at one from Harbor Freight. Um, I think it was the same size, or even a twenty-seven gallon. And uh, the specs were pretty much the same as far as CFM and everything, but it was just a regular kind of noisy compressor. It wasn't quite tech, and um, it was like 400 bucks. So this was almost 100 less. Like I said, it was like 308 before tax and stuff. So I figured I'll uh, give it a shot. As far as uh, blasting cabinets go, I'm not exactly sure what I want to pick up. I kind of hear uh, mixed stuff about the Harbor Freight cabinets. I figured I'd probably get a little kind of a uh, bench top one because I don't really have space for the uh, huge one. I looked up a couple of videos on YouTube quick, and it seemed really quiet. And that's one thing I hate about that compressor. It takes some time to fill up, um, which I mean, most of them are. I think this one, zero to, um, I think 150, takes about five minutes or so when you first start it up. But if it's quiet, I don't think I'm gonna mind it too much. A little up close look. I really like this about it. Everything is just kind of, uh, you have an operating panel here. Whereas with the Little Harbor Freight one, everything's just kind of thrown over at the bottom there. Um, obviously, it's a small compressor, so it's all the way down at the floor. But this, uh, the actual compressing part itself looks pretty funky. We have dual air intakes here. The uh, on and off is right back here. We got a drain valve. I'm probably gonna pull these off and just put the hose directly on here because these could be kind of a restriction using the quick disconnects. Even on the compressor itself, 80% quieter. Solid tires. All right, so before I get this into place, I'm gonna have to get the Camaro out of here. So um, I'll have to drop it down, push it out, try to get this in the corner. Before we do that, let's just plug it in and uh, see how loud it is. Plug it in over here for now. Off. 
Now, obviously, I don't have anything hooked up to it, but it has uh, the quick disconnect, so air isn't going to come out of it. That is very quiet. I'm gonna go grab my decibel meter. All right, so I got you guys about four feet away. Got the decibel meter. About 82, 83. Yeah, the initial fill up definitely takes some time. Yeah, so it takes a good five minutes to fill up, but once you do that initial fill for the day, um, the recovery shouldn't be nearly as long. All right, so before I disconnect the old 10 gallon, um, I got the decibel meter. Let's just hear how loud this is. Now the doors are open, so it might actually be a little bit lower. And I can't really close them right now because I have the Camaro's ass sticking halfway out. This thing hates to start when it's cold too. Difference. This is with the door open. Now I'm not exactly sure if it's going to fit under this. I'm hoping it will. Otherwise, I'm going to have to put in a kind of stick it here. But I was hoping I could just kind of jam it in the corner. Uh, well, there's only one way to find out, I guess. Uh, I don't know if I want to wedge it in the corner there because I can kind of wedge it there and still pull it out if I had to with this hose on it. Uh, I think I'm keep it here. Looks like this I can shorten. Do that, I'll tie it up somehow. I guess the whole point of this is so it's portable. I don't play my lug in this thing anywhere, so I'm just gonna screw that right into there. prettiest but that'll work should probably open the regulator up switches on And I actually have a water separator here because I know that's something you're gonna want um, with the sandblaster. So this has been on here since day one. I'm just gonna leave that the way it is. And overall, there's really no restrictions here. Um, it's a 50 foot hose, which uh, 
I don't think that's gonna really make too big of a difference because all the fittings going through here, everything's direct. So this is, isn't using a quick connect that's gonna cause a restriction. That's directly into there. Um, the only thing I can really probably do is go to a bigger inside diameter hose. This is a 3 8 maybe I go to a half inch. Um, it might help with the blaster. I gotta see once I actually get the cabinet and start trying it out. But I think I'm gonna get a workbench or take one from my house, one of the six foot ones that have the storage underneath. And maybe I'll remove the shelf and uh, I can put the other compressor underneath, use it as an extra tank. But I have a feeling that the 26 is gonna be plenty. And then um, with that workbench here, I was gonna move this cabinet to this side, being it sticks out a hell of a lot less than this table. And this is only temporary, but I figured after putting this table in here, I was actually able to work on the Trans Am pretty comfortably. So as long as that isn't gonna be in the way of the Tahoe, I mean, it is a good amount narrower than this. I think it's gonna work out good and I can actually have a little extra bench space because as you can see, I kind of need it. I just actually swapped another piston out for the Camaro. So once that one's done, we got one to go. Next week, I'm gonna drop this off to get the Rolector reel swapped out. Then hopefully we'll be putting the uh, bottom end back together. All right, so I just turned the car a little bit and I can still get through there. It's a little tight, but I can still get through the other side if I had to. And you can see there's still a crap load of space in the middle, so. Either way, I think I might just leave it there and not even bother raising it. Plus, I have a spot for my extra propane. I don't have to just have it lying in the middle of the floor anymore. But let's drain some air out of this thing, and we'll see how long the uh, recovery time is. bad at all but yeah once the initial fill up is done um the recovery is relatively quick and as i mentioned it is unbelievably freaking quiet i wish you guys can hear it in real life um compared to that other one that little harbor freight one isn't even that big and uh i just hated using it because anytime i was doing something big i mean it's only a 10 gallon tank so granted it's gonna have to recover a lot not only that just using it in the cold always give me a hard time trying to start i have to kind of flick it on and off on and off I guess just the oil thickens up and it kind of puts a load on the uh, circuit. It takes a little extra time to get that oil moving. But so far, um, I'm happy with the looks of it. I like the fitment. Tucks in there very nicely. Looks like it's really well made. I love the layout. Gauges are really easy to see. Everything's up high. All right, so I have my uh, central pneumatic earthquake gun here. I don't have my wheel out key with me to pull a front wheel, so I'm just going to use a uh, thin wall socket to break one of the back ones loose. These are um, 21 millimeters. Actually, probably got a lot of power. Oh, wow. That was not an issue. power so overall i definitely recommend the cobalt quiet tech 26 gallon compressor so if you're in the market for a compressor definitely check it out i'm gonna put a link to it below the video um as for what's next i just have to look for a sandblasting cabinet now i'm probably gonna use that for a lot of trans am stuff um that's the whole reason why i got this compressor to begin with but uh, leave any comments below. Let me know what blasting cabinet you might recommend if any of you guys have one. The two main ones I was looking at were the Harbor Freight Benchtop one, which seemed a little bit high and it got, you know, mixed reviews. There seems to be a lot of stuff you need to do to it to kind of make it usable and, you know, a decent uh, blasting cabinet. The other one I was looking at was an Eastwood. It's like 275 bucks. 
Um, I believe a hundred and something more than the Harbor Freight one, but it seems to get a lot better reviews. That's kind of the one I was looking at. If there's any other brands you guys recommend out there, something that you may have that you think I should go check out, please let me know, leave a comment below. But for now, I was gonna do it for this video. I'll see you guys in a few days.